Modeling in Blender is about practicing. Today, we will learn how to make this model and CG Sort will make the texturing and rendering on his YouTube channel in a different video. In this video, I will use the Fluent add-on, but you can do it with any other tools you want. Let's start by creating a Fluent object. Display the grid by right-clicking. Rotate it by 90 degrees. Draw a rectangle from the center by holding Shift. We want to make a rectangular shape with a slim profile and bevel it. You can change the number of segments by pressing V and moving the mouse left and right. Press V again to change the bevel width. This should be good. Right click to validate the action. To make it easier to see the shapes, I enable the cavity option. Add a bevel and reduce it a bit so we have a clean edge. We are going to start adding details to the side with a cut. Once again, I'm holding shift to draw from the center. We are going to add a taper to this cut in order to add depth to it. Don't worry if the bevel is not on every edge. We will fix it after the cut. This is looking good. We can now change the outer bevel angle in the modifier tab. Show the boolean object by pressing greater than, lower than and select the cut we just made to edit it. Add a straight bevel by pressing B then C to the corners and we can add a bit more details to this part. This time we are going to use the face inset tool. Select the face, press I and click once it's good. Press enter to cut the object. Let's change to a slice operation and right click. I would like to make another cut right here. It's important to make details on every scale, big, medium and small. Let's make a round top. Since we cannot clamp the bevel, we need to make it just before it overlaps. Show the boolean and add a weld modifier to the cutter we just made. If the top edges are not merged, you can edit the cutter and increase the bevel width until they merge. It's now time to add small details. To do this, we will make two circle cuts, like something you can open for maintenance, for example. Use the array tool by pressing A. Make one last cut on those circles. You can show the grid on only one of them by pressing X, then right clicking on the face that you want. I will rotate the cuts so it's more realistic using the Blender rotation tool. You can click on the pen at the bottom to continue cutting the current object. Reproduce the same step for the other circle. We're going to add details to the front now. Use the face inset tool and make sure to keep a good margin on the side so we can add details later on. Here I'm holding V and moving the mouse to the right to increase the grid resolution. If you want to change the cut, go to edit mode and scale as you want. Here it is a bit 
too large, so I scale it down. Use the array tool to make multiple cuts and add a small bevel. Press M to mirror it to the other side and move it from the side so we can add a chamfer later. Select the Boolean object we just made and use the Duplicate tool. This tool is really useful when you want to make the exact same cut in other places. Click where you want to cut and right click to validate. Since it's a duplicate of the other cut, we need to go to the modifiers and click on the number here. This way, the rotation of the second cut will be independent of the one on the top. It's important to always follow the big, medium and small details across your model. This way, it looks more pleasant. For this cut, I will use a technique that we call cut the cutter. In order to do this, hold shift and click on the pen at the bottom. As you can see, we are now cutting the object used for the previous cut. Here, we hold shift and right click to show the blue plane. This plane will allow us to draw freely using the shape tool. When using the shape tool, you can hold control and it will snap by 45 degrees angle when it's red. Click to validate the segment and make a shape like this. To validate the shape, hold shift and click. We do have an artifact here. Show the wireframe and go to edit mode. Display in transparent. Use Ctrl R to place an edge and show the booleans to better see where we place it. Hold Shift and press F to go back to object mode and clean the mesh. The artifact is now gone. We can add an inset on the side. Sometimes when you use the inset tool, you will not see it. Uh, you have to change the inset thickness. To make it more interesting, we add a bevel and make the cutter a bit larger. I will add a cut at the bottom using the same technique as before. We are now adding a chamfer on the front. Uh, we need to go into destructive mode. Open the Fluent menu, hold Alt, and click on the white flag. This will apply all the modifiers except the outer bevel. You can now see th the object is now a real geometry. Select the outer edges like this and press Ctrl B to make a chamfer. Adjust the vertices to be more aligned and don't forget to do it on the other side. Let's add a bit more details on the side. 
and use an array to make some kind of a grid. Be careful about the bevel overlap at the bottom and the top of the cut. We have an artifact here. Go to edit mode and use the knife tool by pressing K to add an edge in the middle. Press Shift F to go back to object mode and clean the mesh. The bottom part is a bit empty, so we can make an inset. Since the inset is made after the chamfer, it will also have the chamfer inside. To make it like it's multiple parts, we slice it from the side using the shape tool. We add a bevel and don't worry about the shading problems. Mirror it to the side and the bottom. Make sure the slice is not cutting another part and right click. To fix the shading issues, use the normal repair tool in the Fluent menu. In the first step, click. Then click on this part. We are now selecting all the faces on the exterior and interior. We press Enter when all is selected to fix those faces. If you see other faces with shading issues, select them and press Enter. Right click and do the same for the other part. Be careful, this part is behind a Boolean object. Make sure you are close enough to select the object and not the Boolean object. Repeat the step we did for the previous part. All right, everything looks good. It's now time for the texturing and the rendering. I let you on the second part on Rudy's channel, so let's send him the file.